Right. Every golfer dreams of hitting the ball with the ease that Alan Shepard did on that February day in 1971. See, he was on the moon, but had he been in empty space, that ball would have traveled on forever until another force acted upon it. Here on Earth, as on the moon, such a force exists. We call it gravity. The stronger this force of gravity, the faster the ball falls back to the ground. You see, the Earth's gravity is about six times stronger than that of the Moon's. So, if Admiral Shepard would have hit that same drive on Earth, it wouldn't have traveled nearly as far. Hitting a golf ball is an example of a type of motion known as projectile motion, which is any motion of an object that is projected upward as a vertical projection, straight out as a horizontal projection or at some angle between the vertical and the horizontal. In the case of the latter two, one can actually calculate how far the ball will go before it hits the ground, so long as you can account for a few variables, which is what you're going to be doing in this laboratory exercise. Let us for a moment consider the setup shown in this picture. After rolling down the incline AB, the ball moves across a frictionless horizontal track, BC. It is not really frictionless, but we will pretend like it is in this lab in order to illustrate our point. At C, the ball leaves the track to become a projectile. The motion of a projectile is easier to understand if you split the complete motion into horizontal and vertical components, such as we did in this drawing. Once the ball leaves the track, the force of gravity accelerates the ball vertically downward. We have labeled this increasing downward velocity as Vy. This means that the velocity is getting faster and faster as the ball falls. What is interesting to note here is that although this ball is rolling off of the table in a path that takes it farther and farther away from the table, this increasing downward velocity is the same as that of a ball that was held in place and then dropped straight to the floor. To illustrate what I mean here, consider the following scenario. If a cannonball is shot off of this cliff, and at the same time an identical cannonball is dropped straight down from the exact same height, they would hit the water at the same time. This is because even though the ball that is shot is propelled forward at a certain velocity, it still has the same amount of downward force acting on it as does the ball that was held out and released and allowed to free fall. They should both have the same downward change in velocity even though their horizontal velocities are much different. This difference in horizontal velocity is what determines how far the ball travels away from the cliff before it hits the bottom. Referring to our previous example with the ball rolling off the table, we have represented this horizontal velocity as Vx. When you imagine both of these forces, one acting downward and the other acting forward, acting on the ball simultaneously, 
you can see how the resulting path of the ball ends up being curved, at least until it hits the floor. You should notice that, as the sizes of the arrows in this picture indicate, the downward velocity keeps getting larger, but the horizontal velocity remains the same for the entire path. This is because gravity only acts to pull something downward, and not horizontally. Knowing all of this, we are now able to calculate just how far a ball rolling off a table will travel before it hits the ground. The first thing you will need to know is just how fast the ball is traveling before it leaves the table. In other words, you need to calculate your horizontal velocity. To do this, you will need to measure the horizontal distance in centimeters from the bottom of the ramp to the end of the table. This corresponds to BC on the drawing in your experimental procedure. You will then time how long it takes in seconds on average for the ball to travel this distance. Be sure to release the ball from the same place on the ramp for every trial. You will then take your time and distance data and solve for velocity, labeled as Vx, using the same equation you used in the previous lab. You will then need to know how far down, not out, the ball will fall. Or in other words, you will need to know the vertical distance of the path. This is the distance from the table to the floor. And it is represented by delta y. Now, knowing Vx and delta y, you can solve for delta x, which represents the distance of the path in the x-axis direction. In other words, it represents how far away from the table the ball traveled. To do so, use the equation shown. Remember that g represents the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. This is a mathematical constant that does not change from problem to problem, so be sure to look up this value in your book. Since you want to solve for delta x, you need to rearrange the equation. Once you have calculated this distance, you will place a cup at the calculated landing point, measured from the edge of the table, to see if you are right. If you are not, review your calculations for any errors. When finished, be sure to analyze and graph the data as the lab procedure indicates.